So we are talking about a plain vanilla interest rate swap. Friends, as I have already told you, we have two parties. We have party A who is borrowing from party B. Rupees 1 lakh at a floating rate benchmark to the T bill rate and simultaneously we have party B who is going to borrow another lakh of rupees from party A but but that is on a fixed rate of 5%. So I hope you are clear with the example. We have two parties. Now friends, if one thing very important which we need to remember in case of interest rate swaps is the notional has to be the same, right? So starting with time zero. On time zero, when the time, when the actual interest rate swap contract uh, is taken between party A and party B. At that moment, there will be no exchange that will take place. Why? Because the notional principal amount is the same, right? So the notional principal, 1 lakh, so it's, it doesn't make sense. Party A giving 1 lakh to party B and then party B again giving uh, party A back 1 lakh. So there is, we usually follow netting off in case of interest rate swaps. So there will be, uh, in case of uh, interest rate swap, there will be a netting of the principal amount. So there will be no exchange. So there will be no exchange that will take place on time zero. Now coming to as let us take it as uh, semi annually. The interest rates. Semi annually the interest rates are swapped. So now what happens is we we said that yes, Mr. A is going to pay to Mr. B at the T bill rate. And the current T-bill rate is 5%, right? And uh, then simultaneously, for the first settlement date, it is 6%. And for the second settlement date, it is 7%. That is what we have put it in our example. So first settlement, that is that will take place, as I said, it is semi-annual coupon payments. So the coupon payments will be done on a semi-annual basis. So the first payment will be done after six months period when the T-bill rate stands at 6%. Right, friends? So we need to de-annualize the coupon rate that is 6%, so it will become 3%. And 5% will become 2.5%. So now what happens is, now let us start uh, understanding what the basic netting off will happen between party A and party B on the first settlement uh, period. So on first settlement period, Party A, who has borrowed from Party B at the floating rate, and the floating rate, uh, the T-bill rate, that is at 6%, starting at the 6%. So when we de-annualize the 6%, that is semi-annually, it becomes 3%. Party B, his commitment is of fixed rate of 5%. Again, we de-annualize the 5%. So it becomes 2.5%. Right, friends? Now, instead of exchanging the whole amount, now, friends, as I said earlier, in case of interest rate swaps, the principles are netted off, and even the interest rates, interest payments are netted off. So, if it goes to 7%, right, then the scenario will be different, and thus we can find out what is the basic net of debit or credit which either party A or party B is going to face out of this interest rate swap. Right friends? So interest rate swap is basically we are trying to exchange the stream of payments with a floating uh, or to fixed or fixed to floating. Coming to the next category of swap uh, which is very much popular in case of banks. The banks also go in for currency swaps. Now friends what is currency swap? It is an agreement between counterparties in which one party makes payment in one currency 
and the other party makes payments in different currency on an agreed future date until maturity of the agreement. Now friends, what is currency swap? Exchange of currencies between counterparties, that is what it takes place at the outset of an agreement or on its maturity, exchange of principles takes place. Interest payments between the counterparties are usually paid in full. Now, the basic difference between an interest rate swap and a currency swap is, in interest rate swaps, we do a netting off. But in case of currency swaps, there is no netting off that takes place. Why? Because the notional principal amount is denominated in two different currencies. That's the reason there is no netting off done in case of currency swaps. The interest can be calculated on the two currencies on a fixed or a floating rate basis. So depending on uh, the type of contract they have entered into, the party A and party B can decide whether it is going to be a fixed, 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 floating, floating, fixed, or it can be two floating rates also. So on the convenience of both the parties, they can decide which type of interest calculation will be done on both the currency loans. So currency swaps are basically meant for hedging two types of risk for uh, a company that is for foreign exchange as well as for the interest rate. So they are trying to basically they are trying to mitigate their risk with the hel help of the currency swaps. So uh, to put it in a nutshell we can say that currency swaps are for exchange of cash flows in one currency with that of another currency. Swaps are used to hedge currency and the interest rate risk in a foreign currency loan and also to benefit from the interest rate differentials that exist uh, among the currencies. The swaps can be of principles and the interest payments as we have already seen in this example or it can be only for the principal or only for the interest payments as per the comfort level of the two parties. So the counterparty in this types of currency swaps is always a bank. So bank will uh, decide whether it is going to have a currency swap only of the principal amount or it is also going to have a swap of the interest payments. So currency swaps basically combine the forward exchange rates and the interest rate swap. So the, uh, here we conclude the topic on derivative products. Friends, very important is derivatives as on today plays a very vital role as far as the bank's treasuries are concerned. RBI has permitted to use derivatives uh, in, uh, in including interest rate swaps in Indian markets for Indian companies, right? And the benchmark usually which is used for interest rate swaps is LIBOR and uh, the GSEX for rupee borrowings uh, is the benchmark. A 90-day treasury bill is also taken as a benchmark for interest rate swaps in India. There we come, come to the end of the session on derivative products.